Hello, uh, my name is Sergio, and this is my submission for my ARC 103 midterm project. Today I'll be covering Diego Rivera and his impact on contemporary art. So let's get right into it. <clears throat> uh, for starters, Diego Rivera was born in Guanajuato, Mexico in 1986, and he would pass away at, um, on 1957. Uh, he studied at the Academy of San Carlos in Mexico City, and then he would later go on to travel to Europe, um, where he would become influenced by artists of the Renaissance period, as well as um, the modern art movement that was happening in Europe at the time. Uh, more specifically, he would be influenced um, by uh, two art artistic uh, techniques, um, known as uh, Cubism and Futurism. And uh, he would later return to Mexico in 1921, where he began to paint murals that would specifically focus on depicting uh, Mexican history, Mexican politics, and a lot of the social issues that were prevalent at the time. Um, being very political, he would also go on to join the Mexican Communist Party in 1922, and being the romantic he was, he would end up marrying uh, fellow artist Frida Kahlo in 1929. Uh, here we see two of his uh, earliest artworks, uh, more specifically mural pieces, um, that uh, really helped bring him into the scene. Uh, this the mural on the the mural on the left is called Creation. And it depicts the creation story outlined in the Christian Catholic Bible, uh, more specifically the book of Genesis, uh, where it talks about uh, how God created the world. And this mural is broken down into three pieces, um, being how God created the world, how God created uh, nature and the animals, and then how God created man. Um, and the interesting thing about this mural in particular is that not only was it Diego Rivera's first commission mural, um, but here we can also see uh, how Diego Rivera merged um, uh, inspiration that he, he got from uh, traditional Mexican art with uh, inspiration from contemporary European art, which we can see right here through the use of uh, people's faces and their body language and their posture. And it was a really, really nice way to, to see Diego merging you know, the things that influenced him, uh, but it also showed the things that he cared about, which was about telling stories through his art and, and really conveying messages. Um, you know, in, uh, in this case, he was conveying a theme of the creation story from his culture. And in the painting right next to it, uh, it's called the uh, El Arsenal, and it depicts steel mill workers in Mexico. And the painting itself is broken into three pieces, um, which shows uh, the Mexican workers. It also shows that the, uh, the, the work being produced were weapons because it was a weapon factory. And it also shows the uh, conditions in which the workers were, were exploited and which in, in the conditions which they were forced to labor in. And as you can see, there's even children included in this in this. Uh, in this artwork because child labor was a very popular practice at the time. Um, still is in Mexico in a lot of places um, and in the US actually. Um, but moving on to Diego Rivera's um, artistic techniques, uh, which are the things that sort of set him apart um, and some of the things that we continue seeing um, uh, being, in, uh, uh, th that we continue to be inspired by today. Um, Diego Rivera was known for his unique, uh, for his use of, or for his unique way of painting murals. Um, he would first begin uh, using a, what he would call a fresco painting technique, which is where he would uh, create a mixture that he would get by uh, mixing pigments, uh, paint pigments with, with wet plaster. Um, and essentially he would create a material that would then go on the mural or on the wall, and it would become a part of that wall, right? It, it was sort of an adhesive that, that would solidify. Um, and then he would use a technique called uh, 
Grissel, uh, Grissel to create sort of the illusion of depth and um, dimensionality. Um, it was a monochrome technique that uses different strokes, um, contour lines, and, and textures to sort of bring an image to life. And then he would finish off his painting using bright, bold colors to really bring a vibrance to everything that that uh that we don't see in a lot of other places um and diego rivera was inspired by elements of aztec and mayan culture um which shows the deep appreciation that he had for for uh indigenous pre-columbian societies um as well as how he loved to explore essentially uh latin american cultures um which is uh is something very important uh to a lot of latin americans identities uh a lot of Latin Americans' identity uh, to this day. And uh, he also used a lot of symbolic imagery like animals, religious figures, uh, historical figures, um, and uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, symbolism to convey the deeper meanings and themes in his artworks. Um, as mentioned, Diego Rivera, uh, when he returned back to Mexico from Europe, um, he essentially was on a mission um, because when he returned, he came with the mentality that art belonged to everybody, uh, which was why a lot of the murals that we see are painted on public places. Um, his idea was that um, when you have a mural, when you paint on there, um, and it's out in the open, then everyone can appreciate it. You can't just take a mural and, and you know, unlike a canvas, you can't just put it in a museum or you can't just put it in, you know, in your home or, 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 you know, lock it away somewhere. Um, he believed that art is meant to be made, uh, is meant to be appreciated by anyone, regardless of where you come from, your income, um, class, anything like that. And he also included themes of social and political messages that were relevant to his community and the working class peoples of the world at the time. And he also commissioned artwork, not only in Mexico, but also in the United States, where he created several murals in San Francisco, Detroit, and even in New York. Um, he also collaborated with other well-known artists, including uh, a well-known muralist, uh, David Alfaro Siqueros, um, as well as his wife, Frida Kahlo, who would inspire a lot of the art that he would come to create. And um, here we also see two... Uh, two great examples of some of the mural art that he created in the United States. Um, the art piece on the left-hand side is called the Detroit Industry Murals, which was, was part of a collection of murals that he created in Detroit um, that sort of outlined the history of, of the town and, and, and the evolution of the automobile industry in that town, you know, with, uh, with the history, from the history of the Ford Motor Company, you know, to, uh, to the advancement of, of automobile technology. Um, at that time and the 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 mural on on the on the um i'm sorry um but the the, the interesting thing about this piece of detroit industry murals is that as 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 really interesting as it is and and, and as intricate as these pieces are and as you can see the use of, of colors and and all these lines to really bring these pieces to life um the ultimate focus is the working class people that are in there. Um, the working class peoples, they're, they're the ones who are running the factories, they're the ones that are building the vehicles, they're the ones who are essentially maintaining these economies. Um, and those are that's really almost always the, the center focus of, of his murals. It's, it's the people, the working class uh, essentially struggle and their plight. Um, and then the, the, the piece that's right next is called The Man at the Crossroads. Uh, it's, I'm sorry, Man at the Crossroads, which was painted by Diego Rivera in 1934 and was actually commissioned by the Rockefeller family. Um, this art piece was supposed to be included in the Rockefeller Center, but because it included uh, a communist figure, uh, Vladimir Lenin, um, the Rockefeller family did not approve of the mural and ultimately this creative difference um, led to the Rockefeller family just removing the mural altogether. Uh, luckily Diego Rivera was paid for his services but the mural itself was destroyed. Um, it's unfortunate but it was actually the mural itself was, was recreated in Mexico um, and it's it's in uh, it's in Mexico City and it's something that I hope to see one day. And one of the center themes of Diego Rivera's art 
was the political activism um, in, in his murals. Uh, this piece right here is called Glorious Victory, and it actually depicts the Guatemalan uh, coup d'etat that was performed by the United States um, during the Cold War, where the U.S. destabilized a democratically elected Guatemalan government and in its place put a U.S.-backed uh, military state that then would lead to the Guatemalan genocide of the 1950s, um, where uh, I myself actually lost, unfortunately, uh, lost family um, during those times in Guatemala. Um, and uh, the stories I, the stories that I hear um, when family talks about it um, is very much something that I see in this mural, which is why I appreciate it so much. Um, and and, and that, that, that being that uh, as much violence and death and destruction, um, you know, as much as, as that all happened in Guatemala at the time, uh, ultimately for all the death and destruction that happened, the ones truly paying the price were the children. And they were the indigenous communities that, that really had nothing to do with, with these international conflicts of, you know, communism and capitalism, all these things that were happening, um, you know, across the world at the time. Um, but they were really just caught in the middle of the fire and and they were exploited. Um, and this was something that, that Diego Rivera was aware that was happening all across the Americas from Guatemala to Mexico to El Salvador. Um, which was why he was actually a member of the Communist Party um, and why he believed that uh, his artwork was an important medium for spreading these messages of solidarity and revolution. Um, and, and like I mentioned, his murals, they depicted the struggles of working class peoples all across Latin America and indigenous people. Um, and he was very much politically involved, not just in art, but also in his own personal life. Uh, through protests, demonstrations, and, uh, you know, uh, solidarity with students and, uh, and laborers as well. Um, and Diego Rivera's influence doesn't just end there, right? Uh, during, uh, back when he was alive, uh, his influence can still be seen to this day through contemporary art. Um, his, his development of the, the fresco painting techniques um, and, and, and these me Mexican murals, um, they came to inspire a lot of modern day artists to not only create art that's similar in, in visual, but also has that same message of, of spreading political and social themes. Um, and uh, one example of, of that of that being the case is uh, by Shepard Frary in Make Art Not, Not War. Um, <clears throat> which was an, uh, an anti-war uh, art piece um, created basically in 2013, um, inspired directly by, by David Rivera's use of contours, lines, contrast, and, uh, and political social themes um, in art. And Diego Rivera's work, uh, as influential as it was um, in the, in the, in the world of art, um, isn't limited just just to art. Um, one of his biggest contributions was definitely through the development of his uh, of his mural techniques. Right, like I mentioned, um, artists and scholars continue to to this day to be fascinated and inspired by his art. Um, but another another thing that 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 really influenced and continues to 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 influence contemporary times was his desire to make art public to everyone. If you come to East LA and you go to some of the schools, uh, you know, here in, in East Los Angeles, where, where the, the population is high density, is a, is a high density uh, Hispanic Latino um, community, you'll see a lot of schools with outside of murals that are inspired directly by, by, um, by, De by Diego Rivera's work, um, from murals to schools to playgrounds to even just street art, um, his his influence can be seen all around. Um, his influence is seen in the work that artists produce, and it's seen in the spirit that communities continue to have, which is a spirit of solidarity, um, and it's also one that emphasizes the unity uh, of communities. Um, and I hope that uh, we continue to explore Dave, Diego Rivera's uh, works because 
his political themes continue to be relevant to this day. Uh, to the his political themes continue to be relevant um, to this day. Uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed my presentation, and I hope you have an awesome day. Thanks.